to another pointy end. Standing in again for Keith Sutherland, and today I'm joined by another council uh, nominee, Matt Eamond. Am I pronouncing that name correctly, Matt? Uh, Eamond. It's Eamond. been pronounced many different ways over the years, but yeah, Eamond. Well, the usual question uh, comes up. Um, what has prompted you to decide to inconvenience yourself greatly and put your hand up for, for council? I grew up in Bendigo. I grew up in Spring Gully and have a strong connection to the community. I, look, I love Bendigo. I've worked all over the world, all over Australia, and I've loved it. And I can attribute one thing to the opportunities I've been given, and that's growing up in Bendigo. It's the lessons I've learned, the people I've spent time with. And it's great to be, I've moved back here five years ago. I was going to run for local council four years ago, but I ruptured my Achilles tendon, so I was literally out of the race, Ouch. which is a bit of a painful experience. So time came around, I thought, you know what, Bendigo deserves a lot better, I think, than we're currently getting. And I'm looking at what's going on. I think we need to put our community first again. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. I came back to Bendigo after seven or eight years away as well and fell yeah. in love with the place I knew yeah. because I'd been here so long before. What is it that you've seen in the five years you've been back that makes you feel that you want to change things? What, what do you feel needs to change from a council perspective? Yeah. Look, I'm seeing a lot of hardworking and long-serving community groups that seem to be left behind. And I think we need to reprioritise, you know, and I think it is a matter of priorities. We have a healthy budget from our rate base in Bendigo, and it's where we're choosing to spend money. So genuine consultation, like there's a lot of local knowledge out there. If we actually listen to people in the community and work out where our spend is going to sit and the best bang for our buck across the broader Bendigo community, so, you know, they're key issues that I want to look at. So that's the driving force for me. It's putting community first. So You, you have a couple of obstacles there, Matt, yeah. and we've raised these with other prospective candidates. Mm. And the first one would, that would come to mind is the existing budget. So you have a group of councillors who've yeah. already committed to things like the Aquatic Centre, for example, yeah. the Alumbra. Um, so you're going to come in and cop that. And on top of that, you've got the Andrews government rate capping, and, you know, mm. tying rates to... Uh, rate rises to um, you know, the CPI. So where does that leave you in terms of realising your vision? Yep. Look, it's a good question. I think the first thing, look, I'm for rate capping, and the reason why I'm for rate capping is the average Australian income is around $963. The average Bendigo income is sitting at around $565. Is so that it's, a fact? That's mm -hmm. a fact. That's a substantial drop. So we're still having to pay rates. We're still having to cover rents or mortgages. We're still having to pay bills, electricity and gas. But whilst our architecture is beautiful and Bendigo looks beautiful on the outside, we're still a relatively poor community. A people aren't people rolling in cash. Mm. So look, I'm fortunate enough to come from a background where I've worked in the creative industry. So I'm very au fait with the runnings of theatres and cultural strategy, creative strategy. And I think there are other ways we can be managing a fairer and more sustainable management of our cultural infrastructure, but also our sporting infrastructure. So I'm really looking forward to being able to look at what are the other options, and sustainability is a big one for me. You know, so we can spend money on other areas that are going to benefit broader sectors of the community. So, I've asked other yeah. prospective candidates too, uh, well I'll ask you now Matt, how important is it going to be to, for you, do you think, to take other councillors on the journey with you? I mean, we've heard lots of discussion around, mm -hmm. and we've discussed it ad nauseum here, about the council executive, basically you know, a fixed uh, career-based uh, mm. enterprise, if you like, with a group of councillors coming in with a vision, um, but copying existing budgets, existing priorities. How important is it, do you think, for you to take the other councillors on the journey and how successful might you be in taking the executive with you as well? Yeah, look, I think it all comes down to listening. You know, so listening to what's gone before, listening to what we want for the future, and then finding a balance between those two areas. And it's one of the things that I've had to do my whole career, and that's I work within large communities, large organisations. And if you're not taking community along with you and genuinely listening to what they want as well and finding creative solutions, then you know, what's the point of doing it? So, yeah, I look, I'll be wanting to talk to exec, talking to counsellors, talking to candidates. If people are prepared to put community first, I think we're at a starting point where we can make some genuine change in the city. You've uh, nominated for the Lockwood Ward, yep. um, and we've, we have a field, I said to Margot Rourke yesterday, uh, a field like the Melbourne Cup field, if you like. It is a bit. Off, uh, out there in uh, Epperlock Ward. Mm. I guess I don't know why so many people out that way are so interested in putting their hand up. But what, uh, with Lockwood, what prompted you to go that way? Well, I grew up in Spring Gully. Our grandparents lived in Kangaroo Flat. Um, during the war, my grandfather would send money back 
his mother in Bendigo and they bought a farm in Maiden Gully. So I'm very familiar with the area and um, think that the Lockwood Ward deserves a lot more too, like looking at some of the roads, there's some roads funding that we need to really prioritise around Morong and, and Maiden Gully. But it's an area close to my heart, you know, I can't walk down a street or sort of walk into a shop without memories of growing up or conversations you've had with people you love and, you know, I've got Lockwood at heart, so that's why I want to represent the Lockwood Ward. Do you have any uh, vision for, say, that, I'm thinking of some of the more painful issues that have cropped up over recent times, mm -hmm. and, for example, the Hargraves Mal. We've had any number of councillors say, well, don't blame me because I wasn't on council when that all happened, and others saying, we don't want to throw any more money at Hargraves Mal, there's been enough thrown at it already. We have a CBD, though, that mm -hmm. is absolutely spectacular in terms of its architecture, and it's innate beauty, I think, with Rosalind Park sitting there in the heart uh, of our CBD. Do you have any vision or any solutions in terms of how we can rejuvenate or revitalise the, uh, the Hargraves Mall and the CBD generally? Look, it's a good question. Um, activating space is a thing I'm genuinely interested in. And I think it comes back if the community feels a sense of ownership and the community has access, like the farmer's market down on Pall Mall is a, a wonderful monthly event and there's a lot of people that come down and so it's finding other solutions like that. But again, I think it's, it's time that we don't really listen to the community and say, well, what do you think we could do to help activate the CBD? There are a couple of different strategies. Like Bendigo seems to be working on a very centralised model where we have a, a strong arts precinct, so View Street is highly activated. But if that's at the expense of other areas, then you know, maybe we're not getting as much bang for our buck as we could. So looking at alternative strategies is an important one. But look, I think going straight to community and asking them for their ideas you know, because my ideas may not be the best ideas. Mm. And look, local knowledge is just incredible. There are generations of people that have, you know, blood, sweat and tears and helped build this city to get to where it's got today. And I think we need to listen more. And on the smell of an oily rag in a lot of cases too, as we well know. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's that, that as well. Like a lot of great innovation or great ideas come out of not so much having buckets loads of money thrown at ideas, but it's, it's ingenuity, it's creative thinking, it's being able to look at a solution and try to work your way around it in the most cost-effective way. And Bendigo is, you know, built on the back of a golden ideal in a way. You know, we're a, mm. a great city. It's a, it was a rich city back, what, seventh wealthiest gold fields in the world mm. in its day. And it generates great ideas, you know. I notice uh, in your background, Matt, mm. you've spent three years or something working as a political uh, advisor or strategist, or I'm not sure in what capacity there you yep. didn't explain. And I guess there'd be two ways that you, people could look at that, right, mm. Pose. On the one hand, you could look at it and say, well, we've been very fortunate in Bendigo not to have a, a politicised council. I, I would think that that's the case anyway. Maybe I'm naive in saying that, I don't know, but that's I would see us as not having a council that's structured around political uh, divide. Um, and on the other hand, you could look at it and say, well, here's a bloke who's got first-hand knowledge of how government works and direct line or direct access to know how to make things happen within government. How, how would you uh, explain that side of your, your background? Yeah, look, I think it's good to know your way around government. So look, I was working as an arts advisor, so creative strategy, creative cities, creative futures, you know, smart futures, the area I spent the last six years working on. So look, I think it's useful to understand how federal, state and local governance works because the reality is we need to work together. And if we're not working together and listening, then it does become problematic and it, you can bottleneck a great idea that doesn't get traction. So understanding how federal politics works is useful. I'm running as an independent in the campaign. You know, my first priority, and it will always be my first priority, is the people of Bendigo, and with a particular focus on the people of the Lockwood Ward. So, To finish off, Matt, mm -hmm. uh, is there something that you would leave prospective voters and ratepayers who will consider voting for you? What message would you leave them with? Because I, I say that because I hope to catch up with you again before the uh, elections take place in October. Mm. Um, but is there a message you would care to leave those people to think about between now and then, the, the sort of thing you think that they should be thinking about? Yeah, if you want representative, a representative on council that's prepared to put community first, then I'm definitely the person for you. And if people want to make contact with me, I've got a Facebook page up as well, Matt Eamon for Bendigo, or my email, Matt Eamon for Lockwood at gmail.com. I would love to hear from people, love to hear ideas, love to hear thoughts. Again, no one person can have all the answers, but if we're working together, and that's what I offer the Bendigo community, a willingness and a preparedness to work with people in order to get the job done. 
Well, good on you, Matt, for putting your hand up. I mean, it's always wonderful to see people in a community like ours care enough to be bothered, because it is, it's a tough gig and a thankless task in a lot of ways. So congratulations on stepping up and and putting your hand up. And as I said earlier, uh, we'd look forward to catching up with you again between now and the, the actual election. Great. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you again next week. Thank you.